Hi guys, this is going to be the second of the warm-up series, so I'm going to be covering warm-up B, and I'm going to answer a question that uh, Clem sent me from Australia. Uh, remember that all warm-ups start with the general warm-up and the footwork drills that I showed in the previous video. I'm not going to show them again, but please do them. Just remember, always warm up, and then we none of us do enough footwork, practice your footwork. Uh, so the first of the solo drills for warm-up B is just a pretty generic guard flow. So you're going to start in Vomtag, and it doesn't matter if you're doing the answer the telephone or the overhead version. From Vomtag, we roll into an ox, step and thrust and wind to the left ox, drop to plow, thrust and come to the right ox, step and drop into Ulber, and then we step right back up to Vomtag. And then we do this a couple of times in the gym going forward, and then we actually go backwards. So back to ox, ox, plow, plow, Ulber, back to Vomtag. Again, either version. Uh, if you've been with us for a little while, one of the things that we do is we add two more guards, which I think are the most important secondary guards. So now we're going to come from tog, ox, ox, plow, plow, alber, step out to long point, step up to the hanging guard, and then we roll back up to bum tog. And again, if we do it backwards, from bum tog, ox, ox, plow, plow, alber, long point, Hanging guard, bum talk. Practice that going forward and back. Um, yeah, email me if you have questions about that. The second one is just a variation on the Meyer for opening cuts drill. Previously, I've shown it marching forward and back, which is good, but we want to be able to throw things moving sideways. So now we're going to do the cuts and we're going to be using that kind of step and pivot that offline step. And so we're just from here, we're going to come one, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four. To do the same thing with the back edges. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Practice it to both sides. Throw a variety of cuts once you get comfortable with the general flow, but the point is to get moving off the line side to side, not just train yourself to do nothing but march forward and back. Next drill is the paired drill. And so it is what we call A-frame versus hanging guard. I'm going to show each side of it independently and explain how they fit together. So you are either, in this drill, the hanging guard person or the A-frame person. If you are the A-frame person, you're going to start in a right foot lead, extended guard position. You're going to parry to your left, this kind of extended guard, which is why we call it the, the A-frame, because you're kind of the, the two legs of capital A. From there, you're going to push the pommel. You're going to counter cut to the same side with that little offline step. And now we parry to the other side, counter cut to the same side, parry, cut, parry, cut, parry, cut, parry, cut. For infinity. That's the A frame person's job. Have nice crisp parries, nice, uh, nice counter cuts to the same side, making sure that your body's driving it. If you are the hanging guard person, you get to start this drill off. So you're going to start with a, a right over how you're going to cut. Your opponent's obviously done their A-frame, and now they're going to counter cut to the same side. So we're going to step off the line with the hanging parry, receive that, and we're going to push and pivot and cut. And now they having parried are going to counter cut to that side. And so now we're going to step out, take that one, and cut to here. So our job is to now do this step and pivot and cut situation again for eternity. Usually we do 10 or 20 reps and then we switch jobs. There are some escalations for this drill. We have some thrusts, we have some double cuts, but at its most basic level, you're just practicing your A-frame and cut, and your hanging guard and cut uh, forever. Uh, go ahead and, and practice that probably on your own, but just keep in mind how they fit together. Uh, the last pair drill we usually do in warm-up B is an eight windings drill. I was thinking about how to show that today and I decided I'm not going to. Uh, Vinden is better if you have an opponent so that you can feel the pressure and how that's going to work. And I don't love any of the solo uh, winding videos that uh, I saw or some, any of the versions that I came up with. So rather than show you something subpar, I'm just going to skip it and go to the question that Clem sent me. So something that um, I talk about occasionally is the idea of the ghost bind, which is a very goofy name. And that just... You know, I, I said it once a casual conversation and it stuck. Now, of course, I feel like I have to come up with a technique that is worthy of the name of like Fiery Dragon de Defeat Smoking Lizard. 
and then I will know I have arrived. But in the meantime, Ghost Bind really is just crossing the line of your opponent's sword without contact. Um, this is more prevalent in uh, SCA heavy combat because rattan batons don't bind particularly well. So I found myself getting to the place where I would have bound and then I uh, tend to roll around it. Meyer might call this a failure. And so essentially the thing that's important is that we are crossing the line of our opponent's sword, particularly as we're coming in, so that we are keeping ourselves safe as we're going on to the next thing. Um, so I have my, my little trusty trusty sword simulator here. It works okay. I should probably invest in something a little bit more functional, but this, this will do for now. So the things that are key about this is we want to drive this with our body. We are not trying to push the sword over with our shoulders and arms. We're not, we're trying to not let the hilt get too far out from our, our center line. So what I actually want to do uh, is I want to use a rotation of my forearms and rotation of my core. If I just do this, you can see how much tip travel I'm getting with very little, I'm just doing this, but I'm allowing the tip to travel quite a bit. But if you see this part of my sword mostly is staying put, which means I have something between my center line and the bad guy. It's very important. So I want to make sure that I'm driving it with this, this forearm rotation in the body, not trying to push off of my center line with the hands. So if I'm facing this, and this just gives me kind of a, a sword, easiest way to show this is with a basic kind of one-two setup. So if I'm here and I want to do this, this kind of motion, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross, I'm gonna come in with my sword, see how my sword is crossing my opponent's sword. I'm not doing this where I have nothing protecting me. So I'm gonna turn my core and my form so that I'm crossed, and then when I get close, I can come over here and hit behind. That's what I'm trying to do. And so this, this forearm motion, this form and core motion will let me cross my opponent's line. If I kept going, we would bind. I would hit, I would hit the other person so we'd be in a bind situation. Instead, right before it hits, I'm gonna push the pommel and come down. But I'm never bringing the sword back away where I'm not protected. So I'm here, I turn, this is protecting me the whole time, and then I step off the line. I can do it to the other side. So again, I'm gonna turn my forearm and drive it with my core, boom, here, and then I can hit. So I'm always keeping my sword on the line until I decide to switch it to the next attack. You can do this with other techniques, but I think the little one-two is the easiest way to show it. Really making sure that you're driving it with the rotation here and driving it with the core and the idea that this part of your sword is staying between you and your opponent's sword until, until you're doing the attack because you want to keep yourself safe. Play with that. The, the idea of, of you would be binding and then you pull it away at the last second, but keeping yourself kind of safe in that transition. Play with that idea. See if that makes sense and it opens things up for you. If it doesn't, send me another message and we will try again. Thanks a lot.